One response to the housing crisis and the economic crisis that followed was this, the Occupy movement. Just over a year ago, Occupy Wall Street was in full swing, and one student's impromptu speech against the big banks caught the country's attention and ultimately changed his life. Post video journalist Brad Horn has his story. That's the bank that took my dad's home. That's the bank. He's crying. They took my parents' home. I'm a law student at George Washington University. He's all over the internet. It's ridiculous. What's your name, sir? Your name? Robert Stevens. Robert stated his name in the video, and the Blaze wrote it down. He even spelled it. The PH. And I'm not moving. Anybody who, who has laughed at that point. Take me to jail. You have not laughed as hard as my sister, who will never stop clowning me. Because it's not right. And I'm not. I first heard about Occupy on Twitter, and I was telling her, yo, I'm going to go. Nobody believed me going outside and sleeping on the ground, no. Robert had called us and let us know that he wanted to participate in the Occupy movement in New York. And we um, thought, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, be careful. It was raining really hard the first day. There were only like 50 people and we were like huddled under this blue, massive blue tarp. We derive strength from each other. From each other. In fact, I wanted to go home. What pushed me over to doing it definitely had to do with my parents' situation. Those folks in Occupy were proxies for a lot of very solid middle class people. The banks had taken a massive bailout and they weren't willing to turn around and then help people whose houses collapsed in value through no fault of their own. And suddenly they're hanging on to loans that are bigger than the value of their house. They didn't do that. The market did that and Wall Street ran the market. My parents were going through a lot of different things, like a lot of different families, income reductions, cancer, the like. And so they got into financial trouble in terms of with the upkeep of the mortgage. And the market being what it was, you couldn't get out of your house what you needed to in order to cover the debt. So you do a short sale, and that's the responsible thing to do. It was the first weekend, so this is the first March. Two streets! I was scared. I was so scared. We turn the corner, and I see the bank. It's different when you hear it on the phone. You know, I had picked up the phone and answered, oh, mom, dad, it's Chase. But when I saw that logo, that's when it really became real. So take me to jail right now, after all that my parents gave me. I can't do one thing for them. I start talking about, that's the bank that took my parents' house. You're on, you're on a public street, right? The next thing I know, there are 50 people around me. And apparently people were taking video. We'll get you out, we'll get you out. It went all over the internet. He called after he had been arrested to let us know that he was okay. And I tell them, I kind of told the entire world, potentially, about your financial situation. Which took us quite by surprise, <laughs> took us aback a little bit. It wasn't something that we had thought of as public, uh, of public interest. Here is the poor liar from Wall Street protests, currently the hero on the left. A woman called and wanted to talk about his involvement with Occupy. And she's on the phone with Robert's mom, and Robert's mom's like, he said, what? I assumed she meant she worked for the school newspaper. So I was quite surprised when I read the article. I go back to D.C., and my friend showed me this article that was going around the, about me. People assumed that I was talking about foreclosure because they think that's the only way that banks take people's property. And from misunderstanding went to large assertions. He's completely lying. The Stevens' home never has been in foreclosure. This guy is an idiot. That's the guy who is lying. Oh, to be oppressed in America. Part of what I feel like a lot of people do is they try to act like this stuff doesn't bother them at all, whatever. No, this, this hurt. 
there are at least 20 million Americans who've been hurt by the housing crisis. If 1% of them had shown up on the mall in Washington, we would have understood that we had a real problem on our hands. It's undeniable. So arguing against the messengers, it doesn't deal with the problem. It's a way of dodging the problem. My parents' story was one of many. This is a national narrative. I am not the housing crisis, and neither are my parents. The housing crisis is real, and it has real victims. I spent months investigating the housing uh, collapse, the bubble. There was massive fraud, massive fraud, and it was done by insiders, not by outsiders. So the people who say it was folks who were lazy, who were making things up, don't know the story. And in fact, the people who broke the rules got rewarded for it. But if we're not even talking about it, we can't begin to work together and find solutions. When asked for comment, the Blaze told us their story was fully researched and carefully vetted using legitimate and ethical means. Robert returned to Washington last year to continue his schooling and activism.